Hey math students, let's have a refresher over linear equations, okay? Now, this is not for people who have never learned anything about linear equations before. This is for students who have studied linear equations, but it was a while ago, and they need to uh, kind of rekindle their memory a little bit, all right? So, what do linear equations look like when we graph them? They look like lines. That's why it's called linear. Oh, okay. So, let me draw a line. And I'm going to say this line goes through the point 0, 4, and through the point uh, 4, 6. Okay? So that's my, and th this is a very rough sketch, okay? So that's my linear equation. Now, how can I come up with, well, an equation that describes this line? The most common way to describe a line is using the slope-intercept form of a linear equation, okay? And that is y equals mx plus b. m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept. Okay? So, y-intercept, y'all know what a y-intercept is. That's the point at which this line crosses the y-axis. That's easy enough. And there's only one, okay? Lines have to be straight. They can't, like, loop around and hit the, the y-axis again. Uh, and then the slope basically describes the direction that the, uh, that the line is going in, all right? Meaning uh, how slanted that line is. Uh, if it's left to right, if it's going up, it's going to be positive. Left to right going down means it's going it's to be negative. If it's horizontal, parallel with the x-axis, that means it's going to be zero. And the steeper it is, the higher the slope, and the less steep it is, the lower the slope, in general. Okay? And I'll show you how to calculate the slope exactly in just a second. So this is the, uh, the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. Now, uh, like I said, b, in this case, is easy. It's 4. It's where it crosses the y-axis. So this is going to be y equals mx plus 4. Now, how do I calculate m? Well, the slope is the change in y, so the vertical change, divided by the change in x. It's delta y over delta x. Delta is just a Greek letter. It's a, it's a Greek D. Uh, it looks like a triangle, and it means difference. And I usually use the word change instead of difference, but it's the same thing. And actually, if you use the word difference, then you might think, oh, like a subtraction problem. Well, yeah, exactly like a subtraction problem. It's going to be, if you call one point x1, y1, and the other point x2, y2, and by the way, it doesn't matter which one you label which, as long as you're consistent. It's going to be the difference in y's, y2 minus y1, over the, dis the difference in x's, x2 minus x1. So in this case, m, our slope, is going to be 6 minus 4 over 4 minus 0, which turns out to be 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Okay? So the slope of the line is 1 half. And by the way, if you're thinking, I don't know, man, if I switch the, the order of those points, it's going to give me something different. No, it's not. If we used 4 first, uh, 4 minus 6, we'd have 4 minus 6, which is negative 2, over 0 minus 4, which is negative 4, and negative 2 over negative 4 is still 1 half. It's always going to be 1 half, as long as you are consistent in your order. And by consistent, I mean if I'm using this point first for my y's, I have to use that point first for my x's as well. Okay? So this means this line is y equals 1 half x plus 4. Now, I want to remind you something about equations and graphs. If you have a graph, every single point on that graph must make the equation true. Okay? So in other words, 4 must be 1 half times 0 plus 4, which it is. Okay? And 6 must be 1 half times 4 plus 4. Half of 4 is 2 plus 4 is 6. Okay? So when you get your equation, 
just check it. Check it like that and make sure that it actually works. All right, let's keep going. So let's say I have a, uh, an equation written in slope-intercept form. For example, y equals, oh, what am I going to use? y equals uh, 2 thirds x plus 3, okay? And I want to know, well, how do I graph this thing? It's easy. Start with the y-intercept. There it is. Okay? B always gives you the value of y on your y-intercept. So 1, 2, 3. This line goes through that point right there. And now use your slope. Your slope is 2 over 3. So 2 over 3 is the change in y over the change in x. So as y changes by 2, x is going to change by 3. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. It's going to go through that point. Uh-oh, I'm going to have to move this. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. And it's going to go through that point. Just like that. So this is going to be the point 0, 3. X increased by 3, so this is going to be 3, and Y increased by 2, so it'll be 3, 5. X increased by 3, so it's going to be 6, and Y increased by 2, it's going to be 7. Sometimes it's easier, if you're just trying to come up with a bunch of points, to use a table and say, X, Y, I'm going to start with 0, 3, and if my slope is 2 thirds, that means I'm going to count up by 2s for my Ys and up by 3s for my Xs. So this is going to be 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, and this is going to be 3, 5, 7, 9, 12. All of those points lie on that line. Let's do another one. This time, let's say I have a line that goes through the points 36, 92, and 42, 87. All right? So I don't see a y-axis anywhere. So my y-intercept is a little hard to figure out. Um, and, and also my numbers are kind of big, so it's a little bit scary. Okay, it's okay. We can get this. So y equals mx plus b. We can still figure out what n is. M is going to be, remember, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that means 87 minus 92, 87 minus 92, over 42 minus 36, over 42 minus 36. And that's going to get us uh, negative 5 over 6. There's our slope, negative 5, 6. So y equals negative 5, 6, x. And now we got to figure out what b is. Huh. How can I do this? Hey, I know how I can do this. I'll just take either point, it doesn't matter which one, and I'll plug it into the formula because I know that either one of those points has to work. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, I'll use this one, 36, 92. 92, my y, is going to be negative 5, 6, times 36, here, let me write it like that, plus whatever b is. Cool, okay. Negative uh, 5, 6 times 36 is negative 30, plus b is 92. I'm going to add 30 to both sides, and I'm going to get 122 equals b. So this is going to be plus 122, and it works. If I had used 4287, it would also work. I'll let you all do that on your own and show yourselves that, yes, that actually does work. Now, despite the fact that this was really easy, I don't recommend doing it that way. I recommend using something else, something called the point-slope form of a line. Now, we'll keep that there because we still need our slope. Uh, let's say I have... <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm going to get away from this example just for a second. I'm going to be a little more uh, theoretical for a second. Let's say I have a slope, m, and let's say I have a point, and I'll call it hk for now. All right? And I want to come up with 
a, uh, uh, with a, an equation for that line. I know that any other point on that line is going to, uh, if I take that point and this point, I can figure out what the slope is, right? Any other point on the line, which I'll, I'll just call x, y. So what does that mean? It means y minus k over x minus h equals m. Think about it for a second. Those are the two y coordinates. These are the two x coordinates. And if I multiply both, of these, both sides of this equation by x minus h, I get y minus k equals m times x minus h. That's what's known as the point slope form of a line. Sometimes you'll see it written like this. Sometimes we throw the k on the other side and we say y equals m times x minus h plus k. Sometimes instead of using h and k, we say y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It doesn't matter. It's all pretty much the exact same thing. I usually use the one in the middle more often than anything else, but they will all, they all do pretty much exactly the same thing. So this is what I mean. Let's use that. Let's say, okay, my uh, function is going to, or my, my linear equation is going to be y equals negative 5, 6 times x minus I got to choose a point. Let's choose 36 plus 92. And what do we get? We get negative 5, 6 x. Negative 5, 6 times negative 36 is plus 30 plus 92. And you can see we basically did the same arithmetic as we did when we were solving for b. Negative 5, 6 x plus 122. Had I used this point over here, what would happen? Well, I'd have y equals negative 5, 6 times x minus 42 plus 87, which gives me negative 5, 6, x, negative 5, 6 times negative 42, let's see, 1, 6 of 42 is 7, so 5, 6 is 5 times 7 is 35. So negative times negative is positive 35 plus 87, and I get negative 5 over 6 times x plus 35 plus 87 is 122. Same thing either way, okay? The point slope form is extremely, extremely useful. So <clears throat> there's another form of a linear equation that you'll see quite a bit, and that is standard form. Okay, Standard form looks more like a number times x plus a number times y is a number. Okay, So for example, um, <clears throat> let's say I have 2x plus 4y equals uh, 9. That's standard form of, of, a, of a linear equation. And uh, it's pretty easy. If you want to put it into y-intercept form, uh, to, to slope-intercept form, just solve for y, okay? 4y equals negative 2x plus 9. So y equals negative 2 divided by 4 is negative 1 half x, plus 9 divided by 4 is, what, 2 and a fourth. Pretty easy, okay? And uh, if you want to go from uh, slope-intercept form to standard form, well, let's, uh, let's go back to the one we just had a second ago. What was it? Uh, negative 5, 6, y equals negative 5, 6, x plus 122, I think it was. Uh, then what I would do here, standard form likes whole numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of fractions by multiplying everything by the denominator. I'll get 6y equals negative 5x plus, oh my god, 122 times 6 is uh, 132 times 6, 732. And uh, then just get my uh, x and y terms on one side and my constant term on the other. So I'm going to have 5x plus 6y equals 732. Okay. I don't like standard form very much because uh, I like to know what the slope is pretty fast. I like to just be able to look at the equation and tell what the slope is. However, uh, it's still fairly useful. Uh, for example, if I wanted to know what my x and y intercepts are, this is really, uh, it, it's, it's really fast to get those. Uh, to get the x-intercept, set y equals to zero. So just cover this up and we get five times x equals 732. Okay. So x equals 732 over 5, which is, help me, uh, which is 146.4.
So that means this goes through the point 146.40. That's my x-intercept. To get the y-intercept, you do the exact same thing. You'd say, uh, this time x is 0. So 6 times y is 732. 732 divided by 6. And so y would be 122. So it's going to go through the point 0, 122. So it's good for finding the intercepts. All right, I'm almost done. Let's look at particular types of lines. First off, a horizontal line, okay? Look at a horizontal line on a graph. If this horizontal line is going through the point 3, 4, and we look at other points that are uh, uh, on that line, all of those points on that line are going to have one thing in common, okay? They're going to have exactly the same y-coordinate. And so the, the equation, the easy equation for this line is y equals 4. That's all there is to it, okay? It's a, it's, it's a description of all the points with a y-coordinate of 4, which gives us a horizontal line. You could think of this as slope-intercept form because it's y equals 0 times x plus 4. So our, our uh, y-intercept is going to be the point 0, 4, and our, our slope is 0. And sure enough, the slope is 0 because look at any of these two points. My slope is going to be 4 minus 4 over 5 minus 3, which is 0 over 2, which is 0. Okay? The numerator will always be 0, and the denominator will be something else and zero over anything always gets you zero, okay? So horizontal line, slope of zero. Now let's look at a vertical line. Let's look at this vertical line that has, uh, let's say it goes through the point uh, three, seven, okay? Which means right above that is gonna be the point three, 10, and right below it is gonna be the point uh, three, uh, four, etc. okay? Every point on that line is going to have exactly the same x-coordinate, and that x-coordinate is going to be 3. So what's the equation for the line? x equals 3. It means it's every single point whose x-coordinate is 3. This one you can't write in slope-intercept form. You know why? Because it doesn't have a slope and it doesn't have an intercept. <laughs> Two good reasons why you can't do it. All right? Look, let's say here are my uh, axes. Um, and this is a pretty sloppy drawing, but if this is truly a vertical line, that means it is parallel with this line right here. At what point is it going to cross that line? Never. They're parallel lines. They don't cross. That's the definition of a parallel line. Okay? So B is undefined. And then if you think of uh, 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 calculating the slope, well, let's see. The slope would be uh, change in Y, so 7 minus 4 over change in X. 3 minus 3, which is 3 over 0. Uh-oh, we're trying to divide by 0. Don't do that. It's not going to work. So the slope is undefined. The uh, y-intercept is undefined. We can't write this in slope-intercept form. Okay? The, the equation for a vertical line, just keep it at x equals and then whatever the x-coordinate happens to be. Okay? Now let's talk about parallel lines. Okay, parallel lines are lines that are in the same plane that never intersect. That's the definition of what a parallel line is. And we also know just from experience that parallel lines point in the same direction. Okay? Point in the same direction means they have exactly the same slantedness or the same slope. And sure enough, if this one is M1 and this one is M2, then if M1 equals M2, then they are parallel lines. And if they are parallel lines, then M1 must equal M2 every single time. What about perpendicular lines? Perpendicular lines. Let's say we have... Uh, no, 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 no. Let's say we have uh, this line. And I'm going to draw... I keep changing my mind. Let me see. I'm going to have it like this, okay? And I'm going to draw a little vertical change and a horizontal change, okay? So this is my delta y, and this is my delta x. Now, if I take this line and I turn it 
90 degrees. Let's, let's pivot on this point right here, okay? So I'm just gonna turn everything like that. So this is gonna go like that. So now I have perpendicular lines. And what happens with my little triangle? Well, now this is going down like this, and this is going over like that. And so delta x all of a sudden becomes vertical, and delta y becomes horizontal. Huh. So here, let me, uh, let me change this. Let me call this A, and let me call this B. And you can see that this is also A, and this is also B. And so if this is, uh, if this is the slope of this line, the slope of this line would be B over A, and the slope of this line would be vertical over horizontal, A over B, almost. Because this one is positive, but this one is negative. So it's not going to be A over B, it's going to be negative A over B. So what we're seeing is that perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of one another. And if you take M1 times M2, you're always going to get the answer negative 1. All right? Okay, that's quite a bit of information. Your brain is probably full for now. So uh, let's, uh, uh, let's call it a video. And, uh, well, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.